I'm going to talk about security incidents, and I'm going to use the story of the Sony attack as a framing to talk about the problems of a APT, a serious attack against a corporate infrastructure. How to deal with it, how not to deal with it. I mean, the Sony story is great because it's full of really bad things that happened and really dumb responses to it. So it's a nice way to show what not to do and hopefully show what to do. Also illustrate some of the serious policy problems we have that are just not going away and the Sony case really brings them to light. There was a lot of panic, but remember the attackers weren't thieves. They weren't trying to steal credit cards. They were out to discredit the company, to embarrass the company. They took one of everything and then they published it. So it was kind of a Snowden-like attack. And that's a very serious attack. And if you're a company that's doing a lot of dumb things, you look stupid in the media. And yes, there was a lot of panic. What's interesting is that it quickly shifted from we as Sony, are defending ourselves to we as people are defending our careers. So quite quickly the team dispersed and it was every man for himself. The team fell apart because they had no coordination. I mean they weren't ready for it, they didn't know what to do, their communications are, are, are not reliable, the media is asking all sorts of questions really fast and they actually didn't know what was happening. I mean they were learning about this from the media, not before which makes it hard to respond in public. It was really interesting to watch. In the beginning, we thought it was hackers, because it's very similar to an attack against H.B. Gary Federal from 2010. Hackers Anonymous broke into the company, grabbed all their data, published it, and that's what this looked like. The movie connection was made 10 days later by NBC News. Three weeks later, the US government says that North Korea did it. We in the hacker community and the, the security community don't believe them for a whole bunch of reasons. And the attribution problem this made this much harder. And then as this government connection with the North Korean government, kind of a creepy government, becomes more real, it is, it feels more sinister, it feels like this is not just a bunch of hackers, this is a nation. And what is a nation doing attacking a movie company? This is not what we thought about when we thought critical infrastructure. It was weird on a lot of levels as it unfolded really through the month of December. The first one is the attribution problem. We didn't know who did it and knowing who did it matters in policy of defense. Is this a police matter? Is it a military matter? Is it a matter for your corporate lawyers? You don't actually know until you know who did it. And Sony, the world, didn't know who did it. They made, that made defense very difficult. I mean, that's, I think, a real important story, this being able to defend without attribution. That the defense has to work even though we don't know who did it. Because Sony has to defend Sony before the community figures out whose job it is, is to defend Sony. The response has to be better coordinated that if you don't have good incident response, when this kind of thing happens, you're gonna look stupid and you're not gonna be effective. There's a lot Sony could have done if they had good forensics, if they had good response. Now certainly, if their CEO is gonna insult the American president in email and it gets published, right, maybe they shouldn't do that. Right, so the stuff in the data, right, you're not paying your female stars, same thing you're paying your male stars, it's gonna look bad. Right? So, so the corporate behavior that you might not want to be made public, you're stuck with. Right? Just, I mean, the moral there is, you know, don't be evil even if it's behind closed doors. But the recovery, the response, the, the way to deal with it in public is all about incident response, which starts technical and rapidly becomes uh, HR and PR and corporate and legal and policy. It billows out really fast. And you have to be agile in response to deal with that. Right? Plan, practice, something. You, you're not gonna plan for this. I mean, this is just you know, a three sigma event. But if you plan for incidents, you know you can respond as a team. You'll have more information I mean, they didn't have the information, they didn't have the forensics team to go in and figure it out. I mean, you don't want to find out what was stolen from the media. I mean, the NSA has that problem and they hate it. 
right? <laughs> you know, they don't want to know when it gets published in The Guardian. And same thing for any, any corporation. You've got to get ahead of this. It's a real-time incident, and the better you can respond, the more resilient you can be, the more secure you'll be. You know, there are a lot of unsolved problems in IT security. I, I hate to pick one as the biggest. The problem I'm working on is response, incident response. I think that's the sort of the third step. We had prevention in the 90s, detection in the 2000s, 2010s. This is the decade of response. I think that's real important. The second thing I'm thinking about is catastrophic risk. You know, these mega risks that have the ability to just devastate an organization, a society, even us as a species, and how we deal with those. I think those are the interesting parts of the problem space to be right now. Uh, 20 years ago was 1995, right? I had just published Applied Cryptography. Right? This is pre-web, and I wrote the first popular book on how cryptography worked, sold 100,000 copies, right? The net is, is, is being born, it's being commercial. Everyone wants to figure out how security works. We were really naive back then. We thought the math would just magically make things safe, but I wrote this book that had all the math in it that described cryptography in a fun, exciting way that programmers can read. It was a really fun time. I remember the research, the papers, the conferences. We were all doing cool stuff. We thought the net would, would bring this huge wave of democratization and, and liberty and freedom. This is before governments had any idea what the internet was. It, it was a fun year, it was a fun decade.